Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Anna Chang, and I'll be presenting my final report on the Main Street Neighborhood Commercial District. So first, we will start with the site analysis and a walk audit. At the very beginning of this course, we did a walk audit of West Tampa and looked at Main Street and North Howard Avenue. So we looked at components that make up the street room, such as the rhythm and built form, and find that, for example, North Howard Avenue has a rich variety of building types. Um, the district is made up of this beautiful historical architecture that is broken up by the amount of open spaces that are used for parking lots. So due to this, we find that there's a poor relationship between building and street. Um, Another component that breaks up this rhythm but can be used in a positive manner are these alleyways. Um, and these are fabulous spaces in between these buildings that we see an opportunity to be activated. Another rich component of this, of this district are the sidewalks. Um, in terms of width, the sidewalks hold a good amount of space for activity and shading. In terms of existing conditions, we see that there's a lot of street clutter such as light poles and poorly maintained greenery. But I think that we must also look at the positives and the opportunities. Um, for example, the sidewalks here aid to the walkability component of this district because they're both interesting and comfortable. Now we look at walkability and um, we ask ourselves, is the walk through these street corridors safe? Is it comfortable? Is it interesting? And is there a reason for me to walk from point A to point B? Meaning, is there a destination? So through the walk, we find that some of these wonderful historic buildings lack activity. Um, and right now, there only seems to be a small, a small amount of active facades throughout. Um, along with this, we do find that the existing businesses are diverse. So it may be a matter of bringing back this liveliness and preserve and introduce more of those local businesses to want people to go there and to stay. There are other components of walkability, such as safety, um, that score low. We see that some of the crossings along North Howard Avenue don't prioritize the pedestrian, and we understand that some of the existing alleyways are not being used to the advantage of the community. Um, and so, in conclusion, one thing that we learn is that there's a cultural diversity that needs to be maintained, and there's already so many good bones in history to start with. So now, um, to study the district more in detail, we have chosen a section of North Howard and created a diagram outlining significant conflicts, connections, um, some strengths and weaknesses within the street room through the principles for connecting people. So here we have part of the intersection between Cherry Street and North Howard Avenue looking towards West Columbus Drive. This part of the street was chosen because it showcases a good example of those good bones that the street already has. So on the left, is a historical building that houses the Hillsboro Education Foundation. And on the right, we have Ray Park. Um, with this established, we can learn that North Howard houses a diversity of uses. But while doing the walk audit, again, we learned that a lot of these historical structures are not being utilized. Um, they have been closed off and some windows boarded up. So although the local identity exists um, through the built form, there seems to be a lack of activity and program throughout the street. And this goes hand in hand with the principle of active facades um, and local identity. The architecture contributes to the attractiveness of the urban design. And again, it is visually interesting, but there's a lack of active doors per block that conflicts with this principle and people's use of the street. And in terms of simulating the local economy, if there's no activity in the building, there's no destination for the people. Um, but again, one thing to keep in mind is that these principles all work in harmony and due to the positive aspects that North Howard and Main Street already have, there's great potential to work with. Um, components of a complete street are also existing, such as pedestrian scale lighting that we see over here, um, which I will go further in detail with the mappings. There's also safe crossings that are aided by a change in materiality to slow the car down. Um, we have some curb extensions and pedestrian signage. And these are all great strengths that contribute to that human scale. Lastly, here on the right, we have Ray Park, um, which is one of the strengths of North Howard Avenue. This green area can aid to future social dimension and urban vitality. The conflict here, though, is the accessibility to the park. Um, you can see here on the edge that it lacks social dimension because um, it has fences and it doesn't generate user space. So um, although we understand that this could be a safety component to not have kids run out on the street, um, maybe there could be softer edges for easier accessibility. 
Next up, as part of this continuous analysis, we made a series of mappings. Um, these analyze walkability, connectivity, and those spaces in between the buildings. So again, we look at the walkability of this district. We started mapping components like shading provided by awnings. Um, and if these awnings were decorative or actually for the pedestrian, we also ma mapped sidewalk impediments, um, such as trash cans, light poles, and abrupt endings of the sidewalks. And something that we found through this walkability mapping is that there's more pedestrian lighting along North Howard Avenue in comparison to Main Street. With the second mapping, we study the connectivity to the district. We see that there is only one bus route going through North Howard. Um, and we also see that due to the pass of time, bus stops are no longer adequate, pl adequately placed in terms of destinations. Through the community meetings, we've also learned that there's a small um, number of buses coming through the district and some of the residents would like to see a larger number of buses to increase business activity. So through this, we learned that there's a relationship between connectivity and district livelihood. Um, this mapping also makes us think what other modes of transportation, such as bike lanes, could be activated to bring more people to this district. This space in between mapping studies the amount of open spaces that are used for parking here in orange. And then we also have open spaces that are unused here in blue. Um, and so throughout North Howard Avenue, we see more orange than blue. And this once again proves that the rhythm of these blocks is broken up by these continuous open spaces that are not utilized properly. Um, we also map alleyways, as you can see here horizontally. Um, and this gives us an idea of how these can be used as a connection um, between blocks. Maybe someone would rather take the alleyway if it's properly lit to get to their destination faster and safer. And so with this last mapping, we start to overlay all of the previous ones to see the relationships between walkability, connectivity, and spaces in between. Um, one example we see here is the amount of awnings that uh, is provided or the amount of awnings that provide shade as one person is walking from one bus stop to the other. Next up, as the last part of this analysis, we created a series of exist existing sections. Um, these sections are taken from both streets that look more in detail at the street components, such as number of lanes, how they are being used, um, the dimensions of the street, and the diversity of spaces. Um, so through these sections, we learned that uh, through Main Street, there's a rich use of these blocks. We have two corner parks, this one here being one of the corner parks on that first block of Main Street. Um, and um, through North Howard Avenue, we also see the conditions of the intersections and the change in materiality that happens and what kind of pedestrian amenities exist like signage and other safety components. So we move on from this analysis, but um, not without keeping some things in mind. These next slides will highlight what has made West Tampa and these streets such a rich site to revitalize. So we learned through the analysis that this commercial district is one of the oldest districts in the city of Tampa and already holds a variety of uses on which we can build upon to create that vibrant mixed use center. Um, we also learned that there's a rich diversity of cultures through the community meetings. Um, We've been told that the residents want to celebrate that influx of people from African-Americans, Latino, Middle Eastern, and Italian. Um, and these are rich cultures and history that make up West Tampa. And lastly, we see, um, or we keep in mind the needs and the desires of the community. Some of them you can see listed here. So keeping all of that analysis in mind, we move into the vision and the framework. So I would like to touch on three principles. I've prioritized for this proposal that apply both to Main Street and North Howard. First up, we have the active facades. Um, active facades on both streets is a great principle to think about because currently the existing conditions show that the relationship between the ground level, the sidewalk, and the street are accommodating the car rather than the, the pedestrian. And so this, along with unused parking spaces, disrupts that rhythm that I've been talking about in the activity of the block. Important factors that would revitalize the program and an activity of the blocks would be introducing parklets along on-street parking. These parklets can serve as an extension of business for seating and dining that would also stimulate the local economy. 
Um, Awning, awnings on existing buildings is another addition that would help the activity on the street. The person wants to feel safe and be under the shade, especially here in Florida. So having destinations that provide this type of accommodation will activate the street. And lastly, balancing the number of active, active doors per block throughout the day can take place by making sure there's a diversity of uses throughout the day to keep an active and safe street for all. Now we look at the social dimension and urban vitality, which is Another one of the principles that showcases how in order to activate these street corridors, elements such as urban furniture is needed. Um, so during the analysis, we found that some storefront owners and visitors utilize desk chairs to socialize outside on the sidewalk. And we also find that Main Street has good bones such as tree planters, safe crosswalk signage, and accessible corner parts. And these can be enhanced by adding a variety of mobility such as bike lanes for easier access, um, and then lastly, adding a series of curb extensions throughout Main Street that would help uh, visually and physically narrow that roadway for the pedestrian. And lastly, we look at the human scale, which is another important principle. We see that the existing scale on both streets is adequate in terms of building height to street width, but the walkability of the streets lacks consideration of that human scale. People would feel more considered in the planning process by activating those great alleyways that we see along North Howard, but also by introducing pedestrian skill shading and lighting and including accommodations at bus stops because we find that some of the stops along both streets don't have seating for people who are waiting. So keeping these principles in mind, we move into the proposals and the before and after of each street. Here we start with the section of Main Street looking towards North Howard Avenue. Um, so as you can see here, you can locate yourself in North Avenue down here and Howard Avenue up front. Um, and here we have the existing conditions on Main Street, which showcases again the good bones that the street already has. We have an adequate amount of sidewalk, um, existing on-street parking, and as we can see here, there's a lack of greenery and trees throughout. It seems that these palm trees have been more resilient throughout the years. Um, there's also a series of awnings that provide um, little shading to the pedestrian due to how far it doesn't extend out to the sidewalk. So this would be the proposal. We have larger awnings to cover the sidewalk zone. I've also added new development on the right here that helps enclose and frame the street corridor. Um, the elements of the street showcase the principle of a complete street by keeping that on-street parking here, a dedicated bike lane, and a driving lane. Additionally, we have elements that will help activate the facade, such as those parklets that I was talking about. Um, for the social dimension of the street, we have street furniture, such as benches and pedestrian scale lighting. And something that we found through our analysis, again, was that the use of trees was not as successful as the use of palm trees. It seems that the weather and size of the planters were not adequate enough to keep the liveliness of the trees. So to keep um, those green areas, a series of pervious strips would be added that can provide infiltration and some and provide some kind of stormwater management. Moving on, we have the second section of Main Street. This looks towards uh, the North Albany Avenue section. And as you can see here, we have one of those uh, corner parts on the left. So here we have the existing condition of this intersection. One of the principles I wanted to investigate further was that of the human scale. So and we have an example of how this part of the street lacks that principle, but has good bones. Again, we start to, um, because we have the park on the left that offers an opportunity for that social interaction between people who come and visit and people who live in the district, but also we have a crosswalk that doesn't make that destination very safe. Um, we also see that these existing buildings accommodate for the car. For example, this one down here, this is a liquor store drive through and there are no awnings in the existing buildings. The proposed version of this includes adding awnings for shading, um, having some new development of here and programming to support the use of the street. That drive through that I previously talked about um, could be used to accommodate, that was used to accommodate the car would turn into a seating or eating area for the pedestrian. And this area could even be shared between building owners. Um, moving on to the street elements, we again are keeping that 
on-street parking by adding that bike lane. Um, additionally, the street would house a series of those um, pervious strips for greenery. And at the intersection, we would have a series of curb extensions or bulb outs that would make the crossing shorter and safer. And these bulb outs would also house plants and shrubs that would add to the overall green rhythm of the street. And then lastly here, um, we have the palm trees that could be planted along the edges of the park. And these would serve as a wayfinding element to the park, but also they would enclose the area for a better defined space. For our final set of sections, we're looking at North Howard Avenue, specifically the blocks where the post office and Revive Church are located. With our existing, um, with the existing section, we see that some of the open spaces along North Howard Avenue are not utilized at all. Some of these facades here, as you can see, um, are not activated because the building is not being used. Um, additionally, this parking lot here serves the post office, and again. Um, disrupts that rhythm of the street, that rhythm of the block. Um, we've also um, have some planters that are not being utilized, maybe because the trees were taken out and they were never replaced. And then as far as lighting, um, there are some existing pedestrian lights, but these lack a rhythm through the block. Um, we also see that there's a large amount of space to park your car and a one-way road. So the proposed version shows a great change in the roadway. We know that people utilize their bikes to get to and from places. So to keep this option of mobility, we've added a contraflow, contraflow bike lane. Um, this will make it safer for bikers to utilize the street. And there's also a three feet buffer for added safety. We are keeping that one way lane and again, adding that dedicated bike lane on the other side. And then for parking, we've added angled parking to slow down the traffic and make it safer for the pedestrian. For the activation of these alleyways that you see down here, um, we, we've activated that unused parking space to the right of, these, of this alleyway along with the building facade. Um, and the space could serve as a multi-purpose space, either be used by the church for activities or daycare and for other events throughout the year. And so in addition to this, the alleyways are also activated by street lights, green strips, and it is aligned here with a mid-block crossing so that it has greater connection to the street. And for the last set of illustrations, I wanted to show two perspectives, one of each street. So with this first one, we have a proposed Main Street um, in North Albany Avenue section. So here again, we're looking at the principles and how these play out in um, this perspective. So looking at number one, again, that principle of active facade. So like I said, most of those existing conditions are accommodating for the car. So this is that um, liquor store drive through that would be converted into a pedestrian seating or street furniture zone. Um, looking at number two, we're looking at that social dimension and that urban vitality. And so to generate that positive use of space and increase urban vitality, we introduce more pedestrian signage. Um, we have, again, those curb extensions for those safe pedestrian crossing. Um, and number three, we look at the human scale. Um, again, the walkability of Main Street depends on elements of shading and lighting. And so by adding, um, adding those awnings onto existing buildings, it would make it more comfortable for whoever is walking down the street. At number four, we look at these green areas. And so to contribute to the green aspect of the street room, um, we take out those planters or add on to those planters that are existing and um, add these pervious strips for greenery to, again, capture runoff or manage stormwater. For our last illustration, we look at a proposed North Howard Avenue, uh, the post office and revived church. And so down here, um, we would be standing on uh, by Revive Church. And so again, looking at those principles through this illustration and how they play out, looking at number one, um, that idea of the green areas. Um, and this I wanted to investigate more in detail, you know, all of the opportunities that could happen. We don't necessarily have to have these trees. Um, they could be replaced by these previous strips that um, could have uh, a harder edge on the outside that could withstand that pollution of the car and the air. 
And on the inside uh, for the pedestrian, we could have a more um, colorful with flowers or a softer edge. Um, at number two, we look at that human scale again. Um, we want to have amenities that are designed to the scale of the person. And so introducing that mid-block crossing aligned to the alleyways would activate the existing alleyways and also create a safer environment. At number three, again, we look at activating that local identity um, and activating those unused facades um, by developing those open spaces that break up that rhythm of the block. Um, and at number four, we look at the diversity of uses. We're promoting the health and the well-being of the resident by encouraging physical activity and different transportation. So the resident or the visitor can, even, can, e can either use you know, their car or their bike or walk through the alleyways um, through the district. And this is the end of this presentation. And I would like to say that through this process, we've appreciated your input and the community's involvement. And I think that this is a great project to be very excited about, and there's so much potential to work with. So thank you so much for tuning in.